Let's get into the giant mailbag. What crazy thing did City, City. do this week? It's time for Mattress Running the Numbers. Ready for the main event? The main event. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. We're doing things a little bit differently for this Friday podcast because Greg and Nick are busy competing with each other for the Flying by the Seat of Our Points Challenge, which is going on now. They are in the thick of it. If you're not familiar with the challenge, every year the Frequent Miler team does an annual challenge designed to test our points and miles skills, force us to do challenging things, and we publish it all for our viewers to follow along. For this challenge, uh, we are testing our last-minute award booking skills with a series of last-minute travel challenges assigned by Stephen and I, who are acting as judges. Greg, Nick, and Tim have been using their knowledge, points, elite standings, upgrade instruments, anything they've got in their toolkits um, to try to frugally and impressively reach the destinations that Stephen and I have been assigning for them. By the time this challenge wraps up, we'll have had four live check-ins total. For this podcast episode, you'll watch and listen to a summary of the first two check-ins, the Monday night reveal of our domestic launch point, and the Wednesday night reveal of each contestant's individual international assignments. This recap will bring you up to speed so you can head over to our YouTube channel and catch the third live check-in, which will have just wrapped up by the time this podcast goes live. And that will tell our contestants uh, what their final destination assignment is. You'll definitely want to make sure to visit our Instagram to follow along or go to the blog to see each contestant's individual journal posts. Uh, and this podcast should help bring you up to speed as well. Enjoy. This is the first live stream for the Frequent Miler 2024 Challenge. Flying by the seat of our points. Stephen and I will not only be telling you where your assignment destinations are day and a half before you need to be there, we'll also be judging what you do once you're there and how you got there. So the first place we're sending these guys, domestic spot where they'll all meet up. So you guys will all be flying to the city and we'll be hoping to book an onward flight as soon as possible. As a result, you'll be hoping to get in and out of this place as soon as possible. LA. Los Angeles. LA. LA. Yep. Yes, but we've gamified um, stage one in three different ways. We've already booked a hotel for the three of you. The first part of the gamification is that it's going to be a race to see who can get to the hotel first. Now, that's going to be super easy for Tim because he's going to be coming from Seattle, where, whereas Nick's going to be coming from the other side of the country. I like to have things be fair for everyone. And, and so we've decided <laughs> to um, level the playing field for your flights to LAX. They are, in theory, not allowed to be scheduled to land before 3 p.m. You guys can all get into LAX on a flight schedule before 3 p.m., but if you do, then you get a 30-minute penalty. So you're not allowed to actually leave the airport until 3.30 p.m. So the person who gets to the hotel first will get their own bed, their own bedroom all to themselves. <laughs> the other one will have to share with the other contestant. So then you can wake each other up with your snoring before <laughs> your next international flight. And so that way, um, in theory, that's an added incentive to be able to get to the hotel first of all. And now Carrie has information about the um, challenge that you'll have while there. So we know you may not have much time in this destination, but we still have a small challenge for you. Uh, one way or another, even if all you have time for is a quick Uber Eats, you'll have to eat something while you're there. So your challenge is to pick a meal that represents where you think we'll be sending you to next. Uh, you have to pick a country. You can't be broad. So whoever's country pick is the closest uh, will get three points. Uh, two for the second closest and one for the person who was the furthest. Your main challenge for this destination is to pick a meal that represents where you think you're going next for your international separate uh, divergence destination. Can they make it? If anyone is missing, it's because they didn't make it and they will be losing points. You guys all made it. I wasn't sure. That's, you know, I'm <laughs> proud of this team. We, we all actually made it all the way to a domestic location. <laughs> we, each came, we each came from different uh, locations, our own home homes. And we're, we're told we had to be here in L.A. by um, 6 p.m. local time or 9 p.m. Eastern time. And that for this for this live event where we're going to talk about how we got here, we're going to learn from our judges what scores we got 
for our trips mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And then probably most exciting, we're going to find out where we're going next. Congrats to Greg for getting the king bed. Thank you. Nice. Um, <laughs> we would like to start off with a quick recap from each of you about uh, how you got there and the decisions you made. Okay. Um, so I found a uh, United Award available with Turkish Miles to fly from Detroit to... At first, I found Detroit to L.A., um, and uh, but then I found that there was a flight uh, from San Francisco to L.A. that was scheduled to arrive exactly 3 p.m. today, and so I really wanted to be on that flight. So what I did is I flew, flew into San Francisco last night, so it was all first class for only 15,000 um, Turkish miles. Um, and, uh, I will get back, uh, 7,500 of those miles because of a, a transfer bonus going on. And I used up, uh, my city points that were about to expire. So all, all big wins, um, flew first class. And, um, then, uh, today I flew that, that, uh, flight from San Francisco here, um, actually on cash. It was a really cheap flight that was on United as well. <laughs> so scale of one to 10, how confident do you feel, um, that you're getting that coveted three uh, since we're doing rank scoring for flights for value and experience, uh, right. how confident are you feeling? So we're getting two different scores, right? One for yeah. one for value, yes. one for experience. Yeah. How confident um, are you in each category? Yeah, not very. So I, I I'm I'm thinking I'm going to come in second in both. <laughs> All right, um, Nick. Let's go to you next. Uh, give us your summary of how you got here, and then how confident you are on both of those metrics. All right, I used American Airlines miles to book an economy class award from Albany to Philadelphia to Phoenix to uh, Los Angeles, and I picked that award for a few reasons. One, it was only thirteen thousand miles, so it was a good deal for getting all the way across the country. And two, I have American Airlines elite status thanks to playing the loyalty point games earned like entirely through shopping portal stuff. And I looked at those specific segments and there were lots of seats still available in first class on both the segments from Philadelphia to Phoenix and Phoenix to Los Angeles. So I thought there was at least some shot that maybe I would get a free upgrade. And, uh, and also because of my elite status, I was able to select an exit row at the time of booking. So I was able to select exit row aisle seats on all my flights to have plenty of leg room. So that was nice to be able to have that. There was also food and beverage for purchase on my second flight, my long flight from Philadelphia to Phoenix. And my aviator silver card would give me a rebate, a, a statement credit for in-flight food and beverage purchase. So I figured this kind of approximates the domestic first class experience for the economy class price. But then lo and behold, I did get the upgrade on the long haul flight from uh, Philadelphia to Phoenix. So I did fly up front in domestic first for that, which was nice. And I got in at 318. The plane actually landed at 312, which was almost spot on with our goal time of three o'clock. I was just a little bit behind Greg and had a longer uh, walk to get to the Uber point. So uh, I ended up here quite a bit behind him, but I, I landed within like 10 minutes of Greg. So <laughs> I, I thought there was hope I was going to hustle up and get here, but he beat me here. All right. And how confident are you for experience and value? Well, so for value, I'm really confident because I flew the longest of the three of us and almost twice as far as Tim had to fly. And my first class leg alone was about two thirds the length of, of Greg's uh, entire itinerary. So I feel pretty good about only paying 13,000 miles and getting all the way across the country. From but how many miles are you getting rebated? I, you, that's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not getting any rebated. Uh, so that's, you know, an argument for the frequent miler. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I feel I feel like I didn't I didn't do badly in either. So yeah, maybe I'll, I'll take a, a second place in both because I didn't have to fly United. And, uh... <laughs> We're all shooting for second place. <laughs> you think I'm first or third? That's what I want to know. All right, Tim, we want to know as the person closest to LA, how were you last? Oh, how were you last to get here? No, I actually got here. Like, I was like, <laughs> Harry, you had one job. <laughs> <laughs> well, so... Because I'm so close, um, I knew that there was going to be a bunch of, well, we had to fly all the way across the country type remarks. And I also actually was really, I, I figured one of them would do domestic first and fit for 15K through Turkish. 
And I actually thought one of them would, at least one of them would do lie flat. So I'm a little disappointed, but that's okay. It's okay. I'm not the judge. These are the guys who are the judge. Good, good thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> given that, I knew that I had to kind of, I felt like I had to gussy up my trip a bunch. And so part of that is I don't have access to any lie flats without going way out of the way. And Steven said that if I went way out of the way and didn't add something that made it value added, that I would be penalized and thrown to the uh, or thrown into the corner, whatever the, the loser's corner. Pepper is. prison. <laughs> that one. Pepper <laughs> prison. <laughs> so I, I didn't want to go out of the way. So there's I really wanted to get um, there's a couple of different products, but my favorite first class product that isn't a lie flat is. Um, called the E-175. It's a little regional jet that has a one-two first class. So there's one seat on one side and two on the other. And I love that single seat on the side. Super roomy. It only has, um, uh, and it has direct dial access and a window. I, I was hoping to get that. And I also wanted to get two different types of transport because again, I knew that um, Greg, and, Greg and Nick would be flying life flat all the way across for 10,000 miles. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I also didn't want, I wanted, and I wanted to get it under 15,000 because I knew that one of the, I figured one of them would at least be at 15,000 and I, I had to be the cheapest, which I was the shortest. Um, so what I ended up doing is I used British Airways Avios to book a nonstop flight from Seattle to Santa Barbara that actually is using that product, exact product that I wanted. Before I booked it, I saw that there was uh, four or five open seats. So I figured that as a 100K, I would get complimentary upgrades pretty quickly. So I bought the ticket, changed the frequent flyer numbers so that I put my Alaska number on my British reservation using Finn Air. Check out the post if you want to hear about that again. And as soon as I added my number, I was upgraded to premium class. And then sure enough, about an hour later, I was upgraded, and got upgraded to first class and got to pick the exact seat that I wanted. So I got the exact seat. So I was really excited because that would get me here just in time to get a the Pacific Surfliner train in business class for 2000 Amtrak points from Santa Barbara to uh, LA, right along the coast, beautiful ride. The problem is Stephen told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> because- I'm a cable joy. Because I, uh, because, because I actually booked everything before I got the address of the hotel. And once I got the address of the hotel, I realized that I was gonna be about an hour away from the hotel in LA rush hour and even taking trains here, I would either get here five minutes ahead, and if everything worked out all right, or five minutes but later or more. And Stephen said there was no grace periods. Grace periods are grace. Uh, grace periods are for people in Pepper's prison. <laughs> and so I ended up renting a car where there is no grace. And used. I was able to find a one-way <laughs> rental using 950 hertz points, so I didn't spend uh, any cash on the rental. And then turned it into a six hour road trip where I went from Santa Barbara to uh, L.A., stopped in the Santa Cruz Mountains, Venice Beach, Santa Monica and Malibu. Um, ate at had five different regional cuisines that were meant to uh, approximate five different uh, cuisine or, or country guesses about where we're going next. And then I even had time to stop and pick up cold champagne for the guys here. Cold, Aww. cold, and everything. We were hoping for warm, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> Last year it was warm, and I learned my lesson. Yeah. So basically, for these live streams that we're doing throughout the challenge, we have a funeral, wedding, job interview, like other important event kind of rule, whereby they have to be available at their destination at that particular time of the live stream um we're basically deeming the live stream as a non-negotiable so if you were trying to get to like a funeral or something like that you wouldn't be scheduling your flight to be landing like 10 minutes after um when it's actually due to start or something like that so that's basically how we're um regarding <laughs> live streams is that even though they're not as important as that kind of live event um they are an important live event so um they have to be there in time for that or else they will be penalized we do have some grace though depending on the situation so if you've deliberately booked something that's going to be getting you um in late then you will lose the points for that particular stage for that kind of travel segment if you are late because you had booked something with a risky connection so say you only uh, like you booked an american um flight and you only had you 30 stop to connect in charlotte or something like that and you miss the connection 
you'll get penalized some points, but because like you could conceivably have made it, it wouldn't be quite as bad as something that was deliberately scheduled late. And if you're just incredibly unfortunate, like there's an, a, some kind of like plane malfunction or something like that, and so um, it can't depart from the gate, um, then <laughs> um, then you won't end up necessarily losing anything or um if you do end up losing any points it would just be like maybe minus one point or something because it's circumstances outside of your control that you can't do anything about basically it's time to award your points right uh and tell us tell you Same. our scoring so Steven. this has been ridiculously hard i uh, bet <laughs> like, way way harder we weren't going to make it easy it on be. you, Stephen. Come uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I was at least hoping that there would be some clearly obvious, like, amazing value booking and, like, the other people would have stuff that was kind of greatly inferior to that to make it at least easier to decide who was the best and then, like, maybe just have to um, duke out between the final two. However, each of you have put together a fantastic itinerary for where you were coming from and taking into account the challenges you had so this scoring, um, I don't know if you'll all think it's fair, but it's the way that it's worked out. So wait, these guys only want to be second. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so before you say anything else. So in first, but I guess sort of second place to own three points is, can you all give me a drum roll? Wait, for which, which category is this? Yeah, this, oh, sorry, this, oh, sorry, this is for the value, actually. Oh, yeah, value. This is for the value. Light value. Light. Light value. So the winner for this stage is Nick. The reasoning behind that is that 13,000 American Airlines miles um, and no other costs other than, what, 560 for um, your taxes and fees coming from the other side of the country um, for the... Um, class of service that you ended up getting um and being able to leverage your um your status it felt like that was deserving <laughs> of the three points um it was tough though because arguments What's couldn't be made for the other two guys no so... no, no, no not really not really <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to hear those arguments so, <laughs> so, 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 let's move on <laughs> three points so, all right and the two slot number two is gonna be Tim. So <laughs> I, I will explain this a little bit more. <laughs> so Tim redeemed eleven thousand Avios, and um, for that he got um, a first class flight. He only had to um, spend five dollars um, sixty cents for taxes and fees too. And then the car that he booked, he booked that using Hertz points, and so there was no um, cost out of pocket for that. So his only cost out of pocket today was effectively the gas to be able to um, drive along the California coast and the food that he had along the way. And he did that. In, I was very impressed with how frugally he ended up doing that as someone, as I said in the last um, live stream, that I'm a bit of a cheapskate. So I appreciated how he got to try, what, five or six different foods for something like 25 bucks. So, so that now was Now you good. know how you can impress us. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right. And then... I, I'm seeing a, a path here, guys. I'm seeing a path. Yeah. <laughs> so, so with Greg only getting one point, it was really tough because it also feels like he should earn three points because if it was like purely on the flight, it. if it was purely <laughs> on the flight alone, being able to book um, the um, Turkish sweet spot for 15,000 uh, miles to fly in first class the entire way and get seven and a half thousand back, that is incredible value. And that is deserving of first place if that was all that he spent. <laughs> However, because he flew to San Francisco, he also had um, about almost $130 out of pocket for um, the flight from San Francisco to LAX. Plus, he had to redeem a free uh, Category 1 to 4 Hyatt Free Night certificate for his hotel overnight in San Francisco. Now, those still weren't bad options um, because he can use points to offset the cost of the cash flight plus the certificate was going to be expiring in a few months and he didn't have any other plans for that so it was still a good redemption but overall when taking into account the value of how much the others had redeemed and how much he redeemed it just felt like 
he had spent a bit more, and so that's why he ended up because um, he did. Point. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, yeah. So if, if, he, if he had just booked that, if he had just booked that direct flight um, into LAX, then I think he would have earned the three points for that. Um, however, but, I, I did appreciate but the Nick gameplay would have beat element. Me too. Yeah, Nick would have beat me to the hotel, though. Right, hmm. right. That's true. He, he values, that values the king bed. So now experience, Steven. So, yeah, Three travel slots. experience. This was another really tricky one. So I was discussing it with um, Carrie and also discussed it with my wife. And it was interesting because um, me and Shay had kind of different ideas as to who did the best. And this is a much more subjective kind of thing because it's more based on how we would each prefer to travel. Because ultimately, the travel experience in terms of the flights themselves, it wasn't actually too, there wasn't too much difference between you all because... Um, Greg and Tim both flew in first class all of the way. Nick got first class most of the way and was also in main cabin or um, in an in a exit row seat for much of the way. And so the actual experience on the flight itself, there wasn't too much between them. So it's kind of everything else that went into this as to how this was ended up, how I ended up scoring it. So I'm giving the three points to Greg. Ooh. And, <laughs> and, that may, and that may seem a little bit weird, but I'm someone who likes to doesn't seem weird. Re 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 <laughs> really I like weird. to remove the stress out of travel. Um, if I have to book a positioning flight in an ideal world, I'd be getting there the night before, so I don't have to worry um, the next day about whether or not I'm going to be um, getting there and things like that. So being able to get at least most of the way. So if something terrible had happened. There would have been multiple ways he could have gone from San Francisco to LA today. So even though he wasn't actually in LA, um, it also meant that he had a good night's rest um, overnight at the High Regency. He got to enjoy um, the lounge there. He also got to um, go and do the podcast in person. And overall, if his um, itinerary was the one that I personally would have preferred, and it just seemed kind of like the most relaxed, um, kind of the most productive, and things like that. So that's why he earned the three points. Very efficient. Spending more is more comfortable. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because normally I would value like lower cost above comfort necessarily, but in this case, it would actually be um, the other way around. So, um and for second place, that is going to be Tim. If, if we had known that, I don't know if we would have uh, called that a good experience. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Can't take that back. Rick essentially spent time at Turkish prison. Tim. Tim. So, Tim, you earn one bonus point for having a travel day with like a little bit of flair. So, we kind of like took it into account a little bit with the whole experience, but being able to rent a Malibu and driving into Malibu, um, we, we liked how you did that. And so um, that's cool. that, <laughs> so you did, especially because you were um, at a bit of a disadvantage coming from Seattle, that did kind of limit how much um, how much kind of like flair creativity and flair. Do with that. So, yeah, we, we were pleased with what you did. So that earned a bonus point. And we like puns. Thing, Yes. Oh. And if you're not alone, oh. you earn a bonus point too, Nick. Oh! So, yes, you right get over. one for having kind of the most straightforward itinerary, like I said earlier. That, yeah, <laughs> so this person, is the pity point. But, so the point. Point. The point. <laughs> but looking something that people would be much more likely to book out of the three different options because i think if someone had to get somewhere last minute um especially from the other side of the country yours is the kind of itinerary <laughs> they took we do like fairness over here yes um i think that covers our bonus points yep so that um, so one point ahead right now <laughs> our uh summaries are now greg at six points nick at five and tim at five um but there's still more bonus points that could be had because you guys had a mini challenge um you had to pick a meal uh, that you thought uh, represented the country you think that you will be going to next. Steven's going to do some calculation here. Uh, and while he's doing that, uh, Greg, share what your meal item was and what your official country guess is. All right. Can I give some explanation? Yeah. Um, You're the boss. Right. So you can do whatever you want. So I started <laughs> off. <laughs> there we go. I, I actually started off thinking uh, we were definitely going to Asia since we we're positioning to the West Coast beforehand. Um and I was thinking uh, that you might send me to Singapore, but 
I'm not going to get into why that, but anyway, um, then I realized that our 2 p.m. Eastern time check-in on Friday would be the middle of the night in Asia. <laughs> and I don't think you guys would do that to us. So I started thinking more about like, okay, so it's more likely that it's going to be Europe or Africa or the Middle East where 2 p.m. Eastern time will be 9, 10, maybe 11 p.m., depending on how far east you go. Um, so, so I changed my guess from Singapore to, at first I was thinking Dublin, but I mean like Ireland, but then I thought, well, if I'm going to guess Ireland and I met and we're right about Europe, but I, I don't want to be that far mm, west. west yeah. Cause oh. it, you know, so, uh, so then I was thinking, all right, um, I know you guys are trying to pick a country we haven't been to. I've never been to Greece. And so uh, Greece has some advantages, uh, which is if Middle East is correct, it's not, it's closer, a lot closer than some other places in Europe. And uh, if, if Northern Africa is correct, um, again, it's closer than other places. So anyway, Greece is my answer. And so I got a, right. a Greek euro. All right, uh, Tim. Uh, what is your official guess? You try. We saw a bunch so, of stuff that you so, tried. So what was so your yeah, official so guess? So let me let me say that that my biggest consideration was where we're at, and like Greg, the um the the meeting the meeting point. Which to your guys' credit, you had to announce it ahead of time, so we knew that it had to be two p.m. Um. So today, I, I I've already gone through three things. Um. I tried some tacos that were representative of Mexico. That would have been a great option if we were going to go to Mexico you guys would have made it later. I had empanadas from Argentina. If you guys were sending us to South America, I think we would have had it later. So I think that you guys either positioned us to LA to make it more difficult to fly to Europe, as opposed to putting it on the East Coast where there's a bazillion things and, and to give Greg uh, and Nick some appreciation for what I go through on a yearly basis. <laughs> trying to struggle to scratch out business class awards in the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> you manage very well. <laughs> or I think you're actually sending us in different directions. That's what I think yeah. either way. Now, I think we're probably all going to Europe, um, but I'm kind of confused. So I did actually, before I I, 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 I poured a drink uh, before we started, um, <laughs> And it's a it's a it's a it's drink like made with, with Russian vodka. <laughs> I think it's water. It's <laughs> <laughs> oh, looks like need evidence. Oh, and, uh, all right, all right. Mm -hmm. And now okay. Russia. Now we joked around about this that Russia would be probably the best gameplay choice because it's big. It crosses both things. Um, I would have a little coverage in Asia, Middle East, and um, Europe. But you know that feels a little like cheating. And I don't really want to go to it. I, I, what I really want it to be is South Asia, uh, Southeast Asia. The problem is. Can I interrupt just one second? Did we explain that uh, the winner uh, of this gets is based on how close you are? And that's oh, why yeah. that's why Tim was saying that. Russia yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's close by it's border. And it's the right. close, close yeah. border because mm -hmm. Russia borders all these different countries. So you'd be closer. Right. So I was thinking, well. I don't, but it, but that feels kind of cheating. My other thing, I got an Italian sandwich. I don't, I don't think you're going to send me to Italy. I've already been I there. Think so. But then I realized I opened up this bag of seaweed snacks too. <laughs> As one does. They're actually from Thailand. So I feel like this is fate. I want, I've never been to Thailand. I really want to go to Thailand. You've never been to Thailand. Wow. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go with my heart. What time is and it? And not with my head. <laughs> what time is 2 p.m. Eastern it's in late. Thailand? It's midnight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> He's calculating right. that you're not going to Thailand. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> Nick. Uh, okay. So I started out thinking Asia also. Uh, it, it, mostly actually because I thought that that would be what would appeal to Carrie and Stephen sending us to Asia. And I, I actually originally thought something like Cambodia or Laos, but but those countries require a visa. And I didn't yeah. think you'd send us somewhere that requires a visa. So I narrowed it down in Nepal, Malaysia, and Indonesia uh, for a number of reasons. And then we had some controversy the other night over how we were going to determine the distance. You know, when you pick your food, like we're saying here, the person who picks the food that is 
closest geographically to the country they're going is going to win this segment here. And so Tim had asked about China or we talked about Russia because they border lots of different things. And so there were different solutions to that problem. Okay, so should we measure from the center of, of the country you pick? Should we measure from the capital city to capital city? And in the end, you guys said that we're going to measure from the closest border with the country that you pick. And that told me that the countries you're sending us to can't possibly border a lot of different places. So I didn't think, I thought that that must mean you're not going to want to like, like if somebody picks China, you're not going to give them all credit for all the different places, right? I figured we're going to like islands or countries that are are, are, are more separate. So I had thought Indonesia and I ordered food from Indonesia that's going to be here in a few minutes. <laughs> But then I realized exactly what Greg is saying. The timing didn't make any sense. It's got to be east. I thought about Nairobi, Kenya, but I think award availability there would be tough. So in the end, I went to CVS and I nailed it. You guys are sending me <laughs> a, 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 a Sweden. The, the, the land of Swedish, Swedish fish. Swiss. The land of Swedish fish. Why did you pick Sweden in particular? Uh, oh, because I have of the fish. <laughs> that's, that's a good reason. Uh, no, I so they're at, in Europe. That's a good question. I should explain that in Europe there aren't very many countries that I haven't been to. There's some, but there's not a ton of them. And out of the ones that I haven't been to, I looked around, like Albania, for instance, is one I know Carrie likes, and I'd be interested in going. But there's like there's no Hyatts, there's no IHGs, there's no Hiltons in Albania. And so I went through countries like that, Serbia and Albania and blah blah blah, one after another that didn't have any interesting looking award options or any at all that I could find at, at first glance. And Sweden's got a bunch of different options where I could redeem points to good value. I wrote recently about using Finnair Avios for, uh, for Nordic hotels. So, uh, so that's why I, I'm picking Sweden. I think Sweden's the pick. Okay. So before right. we announce where you're going, there's two very quick things to cover. First is that if we had calculated this based on your initial guesses, Tim would, uh, sorry, Nick would have been the furthest away Mm. Nick and uh, sorry, Greg and Tim would have been closer than him, and their guesses were only thirteen miles different before. In terms, and of this distance. is the guesses you didn't publish. Your, your guesses that you uh, didn't pick. They privately no gave us guesses ahead of yeah. time that well, were supposed uh, to be their final. So, so not not that you were only thirteen miles away from the country you guessed. But our but distance was thirteen from miles each other. between. Yeah, the total distance between um, the two countries each of you guessed was only a difference of thirteen miles. And wow. Tim would have won the three points for being the closest of all three guys. However, you've all changed your country since, and so the number of points that you'll each earn has all changed as well. And then the other so, thing, just before Carrie announces where you're going to be going, we changed things up ever so slightly mm. in that when we've all been discussing this before, we said that like we'd be giving you a city that you'd be flying to next. We're not going to be giving you each a city to fly to next. <laughs> we're, That's we're, confusing. We're, we're going to be giving you a country. country. Okay. Uh, so okay. basically, that gives you a little bit more flexibility because yeah, yeah. all of the countries we're giving you, the cities in them that you might want to book might have like one or two or three good options or something like that. But then it might be that you would have preferred like a better redemption option in a different city or something like that. So we figured we'll give you guys a little bit of flexibility yeah. um, to be able to book the best possible thing to your liking. And well, so that, can I just say, thing. say now I'm feeling really good about changing my guests from Singapore. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start with Greg. Greg, you may not own a Tesla, but you work with a Nick. Your destination is the country where Nikola Tesla is from. It wasn't even this country at the time, but it's what this country is now. Croatia. Correct. That's right. Ah, Greg right. is going to That's Croatia. Great. Three challenges. One, eat something that either still has eyeballs, still has <laughs> tentacles, or both. Your second right. challenge. There are many ways to enjoy the water in Croatia. Show us one of them. Oh, great. And three, teach us what makes Croatia's black risotto black. Tim, you filled your day with your own personal favorites, but you'll be going to a country that's near and dear to my heart, as it's where we Yoders originate. Sweden. Um, Sweden. No, it's Sweden. Sweden. Okay. Um, this country is notoriously expensive. Can you eat something authentic and for it's, under it's $20? Not, it's not Norway. So is it Finland? No. Second challenge. Get higher than the hills so you can see if they're really alive oh, with the sound of music. 
No. <laughs> <laughs> and three, we know you like a nice glass of wine, but see if you can find this drink, which originated here, absent. Switzerland. <laughs> yes. yes. Nick, we picked a place you've never been before, but Tim has been there very, very recently. So I'm going to guess it's got to be Morocco. Morocco, you got All it. Right. And here are your challenges. Find an authentic Moroccan dish served in a tagine. You might have to help my pronunciation. Yeah. Two, you impressed your kids by visiting Santa. Can you impress them by doing something that convinces them you're Indiana Jones? Can you do what we failed to do in Macau and find a place to enjoy some live music? <laughs> <laughs> Very recently, Nick made a comment saying, I just don't want to go to Europe. And so we changed it. <laughs> <laughs> now we're down to announcing whose guesses were closest and therefore the award the mini challenge uh greg was the closest followed by nick uh and then lastly tim so yeah we'll give um greg three points uh nick two and tim one all right so let well, me one ahead of you there tim <laughs> quick, quick well, my second little... place back whereas if you'd gone with your original guesses tim would have got three points, Greg would have got two, and Nick would have got one. So every single one wow. of you has a different number of points than you would have actually ended up with. Yeah, a, yeah. CBS ended up being... A... CBS was huge. <laughs> yeah. Swedish fish, which I don't like, by the way. So now one. our new point totals, uh, based on that bonus round, is Greg with nine, uh, Nick with seven, and Tim with six. Mm. oh we got some catching up and well i was just gonna say so now like these guys i'm assuming are gonna be trying to do some award booking as soon as possible because it's what seven o'clock where you guys are or about to be seven o'clock p.m okay. and so in theory there's a chance they might be able to get a last minute flight out right. tonight over to europe or morocco and so it'll be interesting to see what they end up coming up with all right cool well see bye everybody the side of the pond can't wait to see you on friday See you on Friday. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> now that you've listened to both of these recaps, you should be ready to go to our YouTube channel and check out the live check-in that just wrapped up uh, and find out where all our contestants have to meet for their final international destination. Thanks for catching up and tune in again next week for another normal episode of Frequent Miler on the Air.